It smells so rich, you know, it smells so expensive. It smells like a woman who knows what she wants. It smells like a woman that walks in the room, owns the room and basically everybody's looking at her because she has this expensive aura about herself. It, it, ah, I'm getting super excited about it, like super hyper because I have so many memories with this perfume and I'm currently on my third bottle. All right. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have another perfume video for you, one which I have been thinking about for quite some time now to be honest, because I'm just intrigued by it. If you are looking for a perfume that draws people in, that has like a depth to it, that's interesting, and that's maybe a bit spicy and a bit, you know, sexy, then you have come to the right place. I have hands down the most sexy perfumes today um, that I'm going to show you and explain them to you a bit. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the video with my favorite perfume of all times, basically. And that is the Chanel Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum Intense. You probably know the Coco Mademoiselle without the Intense and honestly I have loved that perfume for a really long time until I discovered the Intense version. So when I first went into the store and smelled the Intense version I was blown away by the depth and the interesting composition basically and I'm wearing it today actually and honestly until this day it smells quite fresh but it has like a bit of spice to it that I I don't know I cannot quite put my finger on it let me give you the top notes the top notes are Sicilian orange Calabrian bergamot and lemon so that's probably what gives it the freshness the hard notes are rose and jasmine I always feel like perfumes with rose are generally yeah really quite sexy honestly and then of course which gives it the depth probably is the base note of patchouli vanilla tonka bean white musk and labandum raisin reason <laughs> and honestly really I can just recommend go to the store and smell this perfume because you will not regret it as you can see I have already got the big bottle to be fair it was a gift but only because I have raved about this perfume so much hands down the best the next one would be the Eclat number 938 I have to be honest with you, this is a dupe for the Baccarat Rouge perfume, so it smells really really similar, but at a much fairer price point. I would love to get the Baccarat Rouge one day, like the real one, but until now I couldn't justify the expense basically, but I mean honestly, this also just smells so good it smells so rich you know it smells so expensive it smells like a woman who knows what she wants it smells like a woman that walks in the room owns the room and basically everybody's looking at her because she has this expensive aura about herself and i love it it it's just divine honestly in the top notes we have amber, cedar and saffron, so super interesting with the saffron. In the heart note we have cedar and fir balm and in the base note we have amber and ambroxane. Honestly, if you wanted to get the Baccarat Rouge but it was too expensive for you until now, I can only tell you get the Eclat number 938. Okay, the next one is also one of my all-time favorite. It, ah, I'm getting super excited about it, like super hyper, because I have so many memories with this perfume and I'm currently on my third bottle, which is the Giorgio Armani Eau de Parfum, C, C Eau de Parfum, however you want to um, say it. And honestly, this is like an evening scent for me. Like I have probably never, ever, ever worn this during the daytime because it's just a bit too strong, too deep, like too musky, it's a bit, 
yeah, I, I would not recommend wearing this to the office or basically in the, during the daytime. But if you are going out, honestly, I think people will just follow your smell and be attracted to you just by how this smells. Let me give you the notes. So the top note is black currant. The hard notes are May Rose and Freesia. And in the base note we have vanilla, patchouli, woody notes, ambroxane, and that's it. <laughs> but honestly, I love this. I love Armani scents overall. I think Armani does a fantastic job at creating very interesting perfumes and having like really sexy compositions. I think that's what Armani scents stand for, at least for me. And this one is uh, no exception. Let's continue with the next one. So the next one is a perfume that it's actually a quite funny story. When I wore this to an event, a woman ran after me and basically, or I don't know if she ran after me, but basically she asked me what perfume I was wearing because she was so drawn to the smell. And it's the Bottega Veneta Illusione. And for me personally, this is an all year round scent. However, in summer and in spring, I would only wear it in the evening. And it's really deep and sexy and it has like this, it does smell a bit like a summer scent because for me personally, what I like think about um, with this perfume is lying by the pool, having your sunscreen on, wearing perfume, jumping in the pool, drinking, you know, mimosas for example, and just having a great time and just feeling good in your own skin and yeah, really, really sexy perfume, love it. So let me have a sip of my coffee. Oh my God, I love iced coffee. Okay, so the next one is a perfume that I hold very, very dear to my heart because it was my early 20s go-to perfume, especially in autumn. And it's the Yves Saint Laurent Mont Paris and I have this gigantic bottle. Honestly, if I have a gigantic bottle of a perfume, you can be sure it's a good perfume because I only have big bottles of amazing perfume. Oh my god, it just takes me back instantly, you know? It's, it smells like being free, it smells like long summer nights, it smells like being not reckless, but like being daring, taking risks, it smells like, ah, oh, oh my god, it smells like youth basically, but also it smells like sophisticated youth basically. That's, that's, yeah. Amazing, oh my god, this is one of the best perfumes that I have ever smelled. I also think Yves Saint Laurent does a fantastic job of creating perfumes, however, this one is the one that I have loved the most from them. So let me also give you the notes. In the top note, it's a very fr fruity perfume, in the top notes we have strawberry, we have raspberry, we have pear, orange, tangerine, calabrian bergamot and cologne very fruity and in the hard note we have peony, arabic jasmine, chinese jasmine, datura blossom and orange blossom and pretty interestingly in the base note we have indonesian patchouli leaf we also have normal patchouli we have white musk we have ambroxane we have moss and we have cedar so very complex scent. They probably put a ton of thought into creating this perfume and honestly, they did a fantastic job. I love it, perfect. And the next one is one that I have recently added to my collection because I smelled it in by chance in a drugstore while I was in Tenerife um, on vacation in April and it was displayed really nicely and honestly, the bottle just drew me in because it was pink and girly and I just needed to smell it and uh, I was actually quite surprised by how amazing this smelled. So I sprayed it on my wrist, 
in the perfume store, drugstore, however you want to call it. And I walked out and I walked probably a mile and then we sat down and drank something and I couldn't stop smelling my wrist. I was so drawn to the scent and I decided that I had to go back and honestly it's the sexiest scent probably that I have, not that I have in my collection, but that I have recently added to my collection. It does smell a bit fresh, so I would say it's mostly a summer scent. I think it also smells quite fruity and a bit powdery, but like the composition just draws you in. Like when you smell this, it's just like, it gives you a good feeling and it gives you like, I don't know, it just pulls you in. The whole scent just, uh, it's so, sensual i don't know i i love this and also of course who can argue with this pretty bottle honestly it's the uh, good girl blush from carolina herrera it's the eau de parfum and it's a new scent so it has come out quite recently and i have been loving it some reviews are saying it's not interesting not deep i I, I just disagree. I quite plainly disagree. I love it. I think it like the longevity of it is great. If you spray it in the morning, you probably can still smell it, it into the afternoon. Maybe you might have to respray a bit, but it's amazing. It's an amazing scent. Cannot go wrong with it. So let me also give you the notes. So we have in the top notes bergamot and tangerine orange. So the tangerine orange is probably the fruity thing that I smell. In the heart note we have peony, we have rose water and we have ylang ylang and in the base note we have vanilla and tonka bean. So basically for me personally it's the perfect composition of fruity flowers and a bit of depth with the vanilla and the tonka bean. And I just, ah, oh, it's to die for. I love it. I love it. I will probably always love it. So the perfumes that I showed you today are perfumes that are quite timeless and that I think you will love if you have them in your collection. Let me know if you have one of those perfumes, how you think about them, if you love them, if you hate them. <laughs> I would be really happy to hear a bit more about your opinion. And yeah, that would be it for today. Those were my six um, most sexy, sensual, drawing in perfumes that I have in my collection and that I can just recommend wholeheartedly. And if you enjoyed the video, if you liked the video, I would be super happy if you gave me a thumbs up. It would help me out loads. And I would be super happy to have you back on my channel. I also do content regarding makeup, fashion, and yeah, basically anything that inspires me, skincare. Um, yeah, I hope to see you back soon. And if you are interested in perfume, definitely check out my other perfume videos and yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.